It's been absolutely crazy and heartwarming to see all of you being so excited about this new Eagle Island Park series. Thank you all so, so much for your incredible support on the first episode. Really means the world to me. And our first Rat Panda Cup, this baby girl of Milo and Lumi, is a fact. And you guys voted on the community wall to name her Kiko, which means hope, which I think is just a super adorable name for her. So thank you as well to the person who suggested the name Kiko in the comments of the first episode. I've obviously been collecting all of your first names for the staff that we're going to add throughout this whole series. Definitely keep them coming. I have no idea how much staff we are going to add, but it's great to have tons of names to pick from. But now first things first, let's go and check out the rat pandas. Like how are they doing? Lost meal quality is at 50%, so we might just want to upgrade that. We do have the research for the rat panda, so I'm going to put this on grade 2 food. Let's just see how much the last meal quality will go up. I'm assuming it will be 75%, but it might be lower, but we obviously want to make sure that we take care well for our animals in the zoo. Thirsty, yes, that is definitely an issue. Like, I did add this water throw right over here, but for some reason, the keeper is not filling it, so we do need to fix that because because obviously the last thing that we want is that these animals will die because of thirst. So I quickly want to check the heat map and see the staff traversable area. Staff would be able to reach this, which is kind of odd that it's not being filled just yet. Let me just check. It's never being filled. It is accessible for the animals. It should also be accessible for the staff, but for some reason they're just not doing anything. The question now is, is Kuhn actually going to fill up the water? I, I have my doubts that you will <laughs> unfortunately oh man you guys know how much i hate the water pipe and this is definitely not how i wanted it to look but it is what it is we do need to make sure that these rat pandas are not dying from thirst everything is looking well their last meal quality went up to 75 percent so i think yes this one has the grade 2 quality right now i actually did try to add natural water here in the first episode when we built this habitat but for some reason i just kept getting errors i have no idea what was causing the errors maybe it's like education signs the station maybe i honestly have no idea but errors all over so i was not able to add natural water in here we have a water pipe now it is what <laughs> so you guess we have great two food i'm just curious that would be maple leaves and bark so they will be a lot happier with that already but fruit and vegetables will obviously be even better now i do want to make sure that these guys will get contraception and the reason for that, where is Milo? <laughs> <laughs> and the reason for that is in the first episode, things went a little bit too fast. We already did make sure that the speed of the aging is going a lot slower. But we also want to control more when these guys get some offspring. So I do feel like giving them contraceptives and removing the contraceptives when we are ready for more offspring. Just to make sure that things will not go too fast and that we have like baby boons and stuff without knowing it. So I think it's a good idea to give these animals contraceptives for the time being. Now again, a huge thank you to everyone for sharing your first name with me to be named as a staff member in our zoo. So the first one we are going to name is Ricardo or Ricardo. I'm not entirely sure if that was Dutch or not, but you were the first one suggesting your first name in the comments. So I was like, oh yes, you will definitely be named in our zoo. So we have Jack Wolf right over here. We're going to name you Ricardo. And then we actually had Caitlin asking to name someone after her boyfriend, Kevin, because he is a huge fan of the channel and introduced her to my channel. Now, this made me actually wonder, like, I would absolutely love to know from everyone watching right now, how did you find my channel? Like, did someone introduce it to you as well? Or with what series, what episode, or what other video did you find my channel? Please do let me know in the comments down below. 
really would love to read it. Now, since we do not have any male names left at this point, I do feel like, you know what, Caitlin, I am going to name one of the staff members after you instead. And then we have Julia. And right over here, we have Emma. And then we're also going to name one of our mechanics. And this is going to be Amanda. Thank you all so much for your first name suggestions, guys. Really do appreciate it. And absolutely love it to name people after you guys. So talking about staff, I do feel like we need to make sure that we take care of our staff as good as possible. So let's add a staff perk. And I do feel like staff healthcare, staff will be more resilient against being overworked is probably the best one to pick right now. But later on, we will decide on other perks as well. So talking about staff being overworked, I do think that we need to take care of a few of our staff members because they do have such a high workload. And the first thing I think of is just making sure that these guys are getting trained. Just make sure that they're able to handle more and to work faster as well. Not going to do anything with the mechanic and the security guard because they have a very low workload. Kundi Keeper has an efficient workload and Victoria the vet also has a low workload. I'm not going to to be bothered to train these guys. Our money is going up pretty nicely, so we don't have to worry about that just yet, but we're also not building too much just yet. But I do want to make sure that we get a really nice little park area where we're going to have some butterflies and some other exhibits to make sure that we get a nice source of steady income. But at the same time, also, of course, help all these species which are endangered or critically endangered to release as many animals as possible into the wild to help their population grow as much as possible with our efforts. So for the butterflies, I'm going to pick the monarch because the monarch is an endangered butterfly species. The nominate subspecies of the monarch, which migrates across North America each year, is categorized as endangered, while the global species is considered of least concern due to consequences of climate change, habitat loss, and universal use of pesticides. The population of monarch butterflies has declined by 80% in the past 30 years. The monarch commonly overwinters in forests, however widespread deforestation means that hibernating butterflies are more likely to die of exposure to the elements of predators. So yeah, reading this, I do think that the monarch is a perfect pick for our butterfly garden. Now all other butterflies are of least concern apart from the beautiful blue morpho, which their population in the wild is actually unknown. So I think I'm going to pick this butterfly as well. So we at least have two different butterfly species, which are both super important for the environment because they can pollinate plants in our garden, which will make sure that fruits, vegetables, and flowers produce new seeds. And then the other animals that we're going to add are the axolotl, which is critically endangered, the golden poison frog, which is endangered, the goliath frog, which is endangered, the lemon poison frog, which is critically endangered, and the lesser Italian iguana, which which is also critically endangered. So these will be the exhibit animals that we're going to add. Now, my initial idea was to plant this garden closer to the rat panda habitat and to the entrance, but I forgot how big the walkthrough exhibit actually is. So I decided to move the garden further away onto the island. So it will be quite a long walk for the guests at first, but later on when we will fill up the island, it's going to be completely fine. Now we are creating a circle shape again with the mud pillar technique, but now it's only for guidance to make sure we are able to make a decent round shaped path for the garden. We will be using the mud pillar technique more often later on though to, to like shape up and decorate the garden and also to use for the exhibits. But first when I had like the round shape in place, I had to pick one of the walkthrough exhibits to connect it nicely to the circle because I am hoping, even though the path of the walkthrough exhibit is super straight, to make the garden feel more natural or at least as much as we can. So a lot of things I did not think of. These exhibits are so freaking expensive. One walkthrough exhibit is $9,000. So that was just insane. We have a low welfare on the butterflies. Yes, because we do need to set up temperature and stuff. The welfare is very, very low. We have two of each butterfly in here. Going to check the layout, nectar feed. We're just going to select all of these for now. 
Not sure, maybe I will remove one or two later on. Climate, definitely need to take care of that. So we're going to put this on 24. Customizations, obviously I do not want any fencing because we want to have a nice and beautiful butterfly garden right over here. We don't need any doors, so we can remove those as well. And we're going to do the same for the other side. Okay, so that one is done as well. But for some reason, the walls are just not disappearing whatever I do. Oh, so I have the feeling that I need to remove the exhibit and put it down again. I really don't know what is going on with this one. For some reason, the black box just stays in here. It's super frustrating. So I'm just going to move all the butterflies to the other exhibit. Okay, so that didn't work out as I wanted to. So I moved one exhibit to the other side because for some reason I felt like this path was more suitable for this exhibit anyways. I'm still a little bit disappointed that I'm not able to add two exhibits. However, it did save us a little bit of money to be able to buy three more exhibits. We're going to have five in total, and this will have like a nice shady area for the guests as well, so they're not in the burning heat walking around looking at these exhibits. Also, I had to put down another solar panel. Now, obviously, this is not the spot where I want it to be. I am tempted to see if I'm able to squeeze it in somewhere over here on the rooftop. I don't really think that it will look nice because the downside is that we need to add a path as well and that is going to look horrible. So maybe we should just skip that idea. Now we also should not forget donation boxes and I actually do want to copy paste them from the red panda habitat because they have a more natural color going to hide them away as much as possible as soon as we start to decorate the whole place now let's also add some recycling bins around here going to unpause the game and also add a few benches now these benches are also probably going to be moved or whatsoever once we are able to decorate this whole park what we have going on right over here guests are coming in so they are being attracted to all these exhibits right over here which is just perfect yes we do need a keeper and we also do need a keeper hut but we don't really have any money for that so let's hire a keeper and this keeper will be named Christopher. So Christopher will be a dedicated keeper to take care of all our butterflies and all the animals that we have in the exhibits. And as of right now, I don't feel like uh, creating a work roster. I'm just going to wait for that. He has to walk a very long way. I, I, oh, that is going to be a really big issue. You know what? Actually, like we don't have money just now. So I'm just going to move. Do we have electricity here? Because else we cannot do that. Oh my goodness. We do not have electricity. So the closest is right over here. Okay. Well, it's, it's a little bit more nearby, but yeah, it's not ideal. So I'm just going to let the game run for just a little bit to make sure that we are earning some more money in here. So now with $10,000 at our bank account, I thought we would have enough to start working on some decorating and detailing. I did find everything a little bit too much spread out, so I did move the butterfly walkthrough exhibit a little bit closer towards the other exhibits, and I did redo some pathing. Also, I did move the exhibits a little bit further away from the path just to make sure there was a little bit more room for the guests to stand and hopefully avoid any bottlenecks when they are looking at the exhibit animals. So after that, I first started with a building around the exhibit. So for the exhibit itself, I wanted to use the round shaped windows because I think they just match perfect for these exhibits and the many round shapes that we are building. And then in the middle of these round windows and in between the exhibits, I obviously wanted to make sure it was all nicely connected as well in a round shape. So I used the earlier placed a mud pillar to create round walls for the building and after I placed the round walls it was just a matter of moving the exhibits exactly in the middle so it all would connect nicely with each other as if it's all one big round wall with like these round shaped windows. And after that we are using again the same mud pillar to now work on part of the roof of the building. I wanted to use the conservation pack beams again for this to create an interesting partly open roof which would also give a bit of shade 
but yeah also bring in still some nice sunlight and a nice shadow onto the building but obviously we need to make sure that the exhibits are not in full sunlight so that's why the inner half of the roof is completely closed and I have to admit that I didn't align the conservation beams perfectly but I'm pretty happy with the end result still I also really wanted to use the planned roof pieces in this case again to make sure that the building underneath it or in this case the exhibits underneath it won't get too warm from the burning sunlight having these plants on the roof will make sure that it's cooler underneath it so it's easier for us to control the temperature and humidity for the animals now i honestly would have loved to have real solar panels on the roof but honestly it's just going to look terrible when you need to connect them to the path so yeah what else to do then? We make fake mini solar panels. So every exhibit will get their own mini solar panel on the roof to provide them with enough electricity to work all day. I'm actually so happy with how these mini solar panels has turned out and how they look on the roof. Really do like it. And also again, using the mud pillar to make sure all the solar panels were nicely placed in a circle on the right spot onto the building. And then I started to decorate the whole area. But no, not exactly how I planned it at first. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but when I said I wanted to create a butterfly garden, I actually thought of a nicely planted garden with lots of open space and flowers, but oh boy, did I change my mind. Like, we are actually creating another walkthrough habitat here, but going to leave it as a little surprise still what kind of animal we will add here in this area but oh boy I'm so excited about this one I actually recently stumbled upon a YouTube video about this certain animal and his real life habitat and I simply just got so inspired that I just really wanted to include it in this series so I decided to create a different little story here the animals we are adding here we didn't rescue they actually already lived here before the owner started to build their eco Eco zoo. So with a little imagination, the whole island clearly was all covered with lots of trees and bushes and later on, the owners had to build their eco zoo all around these natural habitats that were already there. So that is exactly what happened here. So the first foliage and trees we are adding in this area are already on the original island and the flowers we are adding later are all thanks to spreading off pollen around the island by the butterflies and other insects that we introduced. Now for those of you that follow me since Planet Coaster but also something I did a lot in City Zoo, you guys all know I am a sucker when it comes down to trees and their beautiful branches just hanging over the path. I just absolutely love it whenever I'm able to add these bigger type of trees to create a more dense and natural feeling around my path and see guests walking under these branches. I just absolutely love that. Now the fences that we are placing around the habitat obviously will not stay there. It's only temporarily just to make sure that the animals that we are adding in here will not escape from their habitat for now. Ladies and gentlemen, I would love to introduce you guys to the oldest residents of our Eco Island Park, the Galapagos Giant Tortoise. This right over here is a male tortoise called Tortuga, which is Spanish for turtle. And Tortuga is 51 years old already. And then right over here, we have a female Galapagos Giant Tortoise, which is called Darwina. As a little reference to Charles Darwin, who studied the Galapagos Islands, and she is 45 years old. Now, what I actually didn't know is that the giant Galapagos Galapagos tortoise really loves these mud pools. It's like to regulate their body temperature and it also functions as like a source of hydration because it includes minerals and nutrients which are super beneficial for their health and the mud also helps with shedding their old skin, removing parasites and cleaning their shells so it really has a multi-purpose for them. And the Galapagos giant tortoise is now classified as vulnerable but in the past the number of tortoises really suffered because they were hunted down for their meat and oil and their habitats were destroyed to create farmland but thanks to a lot of conservation efforts the number of giant Galapagos tortoises has gone up again from almost going extinct which really shows how important it is for us humans to protect these animals and that history will never repeat itself again so even though they are now classified as vulnerable according to Dissipedia I think having these tortoises living on our island even before we started building the eco zoo here i think it's just a perfect fit what do you guys think what i did find super funny with seeing a galapagos giant tortoise in their natural habitat 
is the fact that the grass is super short because the tortoise is like eating it all. It's almost like naturally mowed grass. <laughs> so what we did in this zoo is obviously making sure that these tortoises do have the right amount of food. So they have a fruit pike here and they have a feeding trough right over here. And I think somewhere here at the butterfly walkthrough is another fruit pike. So by making sure that they have enough to eat, we are able to like reintroduce a lot of flowers and plants with the butterflies and other insects that we reintroduced right over here to make sure that like these plants and flowers are all growing again to make a very nice and beautiful natural habitat for these guys. Now I did notice that, that these tortoises became pretty stressed when walking through these guests right over here. And when that happened, they sometimes just try to hide in between these bushes and stuff, which is just super adorable. But to make sure that they are not that stressed, I did make sure to add like these do not disturb signs. They're pretty much everywhere. Well, this one is there. Oh, wait, is that one broken? Oh, it is. <laughs> How do you vandalize that even in the ground? <laughs> But anyways, it is working, so the animals are definitely less stressed, and that is obviously what we want. Before we do go to these exhibits right over here, I do want to check the keeper real quick. Because the keeper, we have uh, Christopher right over here, which is taking care of the butterfly garden all by itself. And like we have a tortoise habitat, we have five exhibits and a walkthrough exhibit. He is not able to do this by himself. I, he has an efficient workload, but... <laughs> <laughs> if that is really the case like he has to walk pretty far so i do feel like we have a little bit of money to at least make sure that he has staff rooms nearby so here at the back side i do want to add a keeper hut and a staff building just to make sure that christopher doesn't have to walk that far away do these guys have electricity no they don't do i want to buy another solar panel already i doubt it so i'm going to move them slightly to the back and I just make sure to connect the path to the area. And we do need to make sure that these fences are now no fences. So we are able to connect the path as close as possible because Elsie still has to walk all the way around the area. And in order to make sure that the tortoise is not able to escape, just make sure to get some elephant grass and put it right underneath the terrain so they are not able to escape from here. And here you can see the traversable area. So they're really not able to go further from here. And now just make sure to edit the butterfly garden work roster. Going to add these two in here. And then I'm going to exclude the staff building and keeper hut from this particular area. I want to make some kind of kitchen garden right over here that will provide food for shops and stuff. Also like a little bamboo area right over here, pretending that they are planting bamboo for the red pandas. So talking about the red pandas, Kiko right over here is already about to grow up. I've been building so long and I just didn't realize that the red panda just <laughs> grows up so fast. So yes, adulthood is on its way, which means that you can only have two adults in one habitat. So Milo and Lumi will be pretty much ready to get new offspring in here. I'm a little bit sad that Kiko already is about to go, but the good thing is like we can release Kiko. <laughs> yes, okay, poop for us. <laughs> we can release Kiko into the wild, which is like the very first animal that we're going to release, which is also going to help with our conservation rating. So I think that's just super amazing. So yeah, yeah, saying goodbye to little Kiko is a little bit hard, but she will be released into the wild very soon. And here we have the butterfly walkthrough exhibit. And do I need to say more? Like, am I the only one that just loves like these overhangings of trees? I think it just looks so beautiful. Obviously, when we fill up this particular area right over here in the back and here, it's going to look a lot different still. But you guys get the idea where I'm heading towards to and it already looks super beautiful if you ask me. And I did hide some Dandolian V of X's around here because I just really love the vibe of it. It gives like a little bit of mystery, I guess. Did hide the very tropical plants of the enrichment items, so you are not seeing those. Let's have a quick look because oh, there are so many butterflies already flying here. We started out with four per species, I think. And we're... <laughs> 
Oh my goodness, they have not been sitting still. We have 10 females in here and 9 males of the blue morpho. And the monarch is also doing quite well. We have 7 females and 10 males in here. So also, just to give you guys an idea, because obviously I did say like, oh yeah, we're going to add these exhibits to earn some more money. But we're also working on an eco-friendly zoo when we want to release animals in the wild. So what I'm doing is I'm pretty much balancing out like selling the animals or releasing them into the wild. So here you can see for the blue morpho, I have set the maximum population to the maximum amount of animals that we can have. Also considering that this is a shared habitat. And then half of it is being sold for cash and half of it is being released into the wild. Obviously, I would love to say like half of each separately, but that is not really an option. I'm just not able to do that. And we're doing this for all the exhibits that we have around here. And I actually didn't know, but you do earn some conservation credits with releasing the butterflies into the wild. We already have six, so I don't know exactly how that happened. But I do really love that because I actually thought like if I release these, animals into the wild I will not get any conservation credits which is actually silly because obviously you will because that is what happens with all the animals but I just didn't realize that was the same with these exhibit animals so that's actually really cool so all the way around all these exhibits we have a lot of animal talking points so we did hire another educator and this is going to be Kevin and Kevin will be doing a lot of animal talks. Now, I did hide them away right next to uh, <laughs> the exhibits. It, it's causing a little bit of a <laughs> weird effect right over here. So I am tempted to maybe download the free build mod and just make sure to hide all these animal talking points into the ground. We also have an animal talking point right over here for the butterflies. So yeah, Kevin is super busy because if we look at the animal talks right over here it's it's pretty much every other month we have an animal talk so i'm not entirely sure if kevin even has time to take a break <laughs> both the keepers and the educators okay so this one is already trained so i do feel like kevin should also be trained and i feel like the keeper at least uh christopher for the whole butterfly garden right over here which includes the exhibits oh my goodness uh, kevin is like <laughs> super exhausted already there's too much to do i didn't get to the goliath frog in time i could do with the rest so yeah okay poor kevin we do not want him to get overworked and just make sure or yes okay staff healthcare for now it is going to be you will be trained so hopefully you are able to do this but i feel like maybe kevin just cannot do this by himself and it makes sense because there are six animal talks in a year and he's just not able to do that without taking a break so we are going to hire someone else we have tracy which is now going to be called Sarah. And Sarah, we will also be adding in the work zone of the butterfly garden. So Sarah and Kevin will be attending all these exhibits to do the animal talks, which will hopefully give them a little bit more freedom and a little bit more rest. So now let's quickly go over all the exhibit animals that we have in the zoo. Here we have the golden poison frog. They are found in the rainforest of Western Colombia and they are endangered due to habitat loss and illegal pet trade, these tiny frogs are deadly. Their skin makes a dangerous poison which is used as a defense mechanism against predators, but also local people use their toxins to create poison blow darts. Unlike most frog species, they actually live on the forest floor and do not require to live in or near water, but they do need a water source to deposit their eggs. And then next to the golden poison frog, we have the goliath frog. This large species are found in the fast-flowing rivers and streams in the African rainforest. They're endangered due to habitat destruction and being overhunted for food as trophies and to be kept as a pet. They're giant and can grow as big as a small dog. And what is actually also super funny is the sound that they make. I will make sure to link a YouTube video where you can hear it. It actually is so hilarious. You really gotta listen to it. And right over here, we have the lesser Atilian iguana that originally can be 
found in the Caribbean. It's critically endangered due to habitat loss, hunting by feral animals, and crossbreeding with invasive green iguanas. These unique iguanas, known for their spiky crest and sunbathing habits, have a fascinating trait. They do not urinate. Instead of wasting water by urinating, they save it. This helps them survive in hot and dry places where water is scarce. So they're like nature's water saving experts, which I just find so fascinating. And probably one of the most mentioned exhibit animal under the first video that I should be adding in a zoo is the axolotl, which is named after the Aztec god of fire and lightning, Xolotl. The axolotl is a unique aquatic creature exclusively living in freshwater lakes in Mexico. It's critically endangered to, to habitat loss and pollution, and axolotls are actually famous for their regenerative superpower, which means they can regrow lost body parts like limbs. They never grow up completely, staying in a larva-like form their whole lives. And they have like this super adorable white face with small eyes, and since they are carnivores, they love eating insects, mollusks, and small fish, which they suck into their large mouth. They range between 15 centimeters and 45 centimeters in length and have an average weight of 300 grams. And last but not least, we have the Lehman poison frog. The Lehman poison frog is a small frog found in the rainforest of Colombia. It's critically endangered because of deforestation and the pet trade. These frogs are colorful, which acts as a warning against predators. And they're also toxic, which can cause like this intense pain and swelling. Despite that, they're also really great parents because they carry their babies on their backs to nearby water bodies, providing them protection and assuring their young ones will survive, which is just so adorable. So yeah, all these exhibits do have an animal talking point, as you can tell, and some of them can be taken out of their exhibit for the animal talk and others are simply either too big or too dangerous to do that. Now, one thing that I totally forgot is adding water treatment in here. So that is definitely something we need to look into. Now, water treatment does have a negative impact on gastrite. Yes, so we cannot put it in like super close, but it does have a pretty big radius. So I think just adding it right over here in the back, how much does it cost? It's $2,000, we have that money. So I think we're all good by just adding this one right over here in the back to make sure that the water that the tortoise is using is being cleaned. And also for those wondering, I do have donation boxes hidden around at the backside, as well as like these educational signs and stuff. Pretty much everything is hidden behind these walls right over here. I was actually thinking maybe we should also add some conservation signs here. So let's add the amphibian extinction crisis on this one. And I think on the other one, we are going to have the invasive species education. We definitely did do a lot of stuff in today's episode. Really do hope you guys enjoyed it. Do let me know in the comments down below and keep those first names coming for our staff, of course. And make sure to let me know what animals you would like to see next in our Eco Island Park. Oh yeah, and if our Galapagos giant tortoise will get some offspring in the next episode, I would absolutely love to see some name suggestions for those little ones as well, because they can have a number of offspring up to seven so we definitely need tons of names for these guys leave a like and video if you guys enjoyed and subscribe of course if you haven't already and yeah i just really do hope to see you guys on the next one thank you guys so much for watching bye guys